What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we have a very special interview and sit down with the man, the legend, the myth, Steve Ozer over here. Very exciting week as we, as of recording this, we're about 3,200 backers or so on the crowdfunding project. I think two days ago, it was at like 2,100 and it looked like it's dead in the water, but I, I don't know. It's like uh, it's starting to hulk up and it's starting to gain some momentum. Yeah, kick out at two, hulking up, uh, you know. I was trying to say in, in all my conversations on social media and, and a lot of these interviews that like, you know, we're kind of mirroring what happened with uh, the early bird ending for, for Macho Man with the new gen arena. Um, and it's looking like in these last like, you know, two days or so of the crowdfund we're we're in a momentum building uh, moment. And uh, people are jumping on board and getting really excited now and, and jumping off the fence in favor of backing this thing. Um, and now it's like, I just hope that uh, that continues through Friday and we get these these extra figures unlocked. Absolutely. It's kind of wild because I was sitting there today. I was actually I was, a train was passing me. I was waiting on a train to pass and I was just sitting there thinking about the crowdfunder. And for some reason, I feel like it's going to go beyond I think we we're going to get further than 5,000 for some reason. You know, it kind of seemed like we were just going to skate by the 5,000. Now something's telling me that, I mean, once it unlocks, I feel like you're going to get a whole new wave of people that are like, okay, it's backed. I'm in. There's absolutely a slew of people that are on the fence waiting for it to get backed and confirmed that it's coming out before jumping on board. But um, I couldn't, I couldn't even remember the, the numbers at, from last time. So when you told me that I was, I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. I didn't know the number comparison by the time and the date and all that. Yeah, there's lot, lots of fans who did screen caps um, and were documenting the whole the whole wild last couple of days of that. Um, and then, you know, that was I confirmed it with my team here um, who had all the numbers by by. I mean, he broken down as in as much detail as necessary. Um, so basically the same thing, like same trajectory. Um, at several points, even yesterday and today, I think we were kind of outpacing last time. Uh, but now I think we're settling back into pacing with it, which is, you know, fine. It's great because uh, we got past 8,000 last time. I, I, You know, this is more expensive. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. We'll see. But I mean, their unlockables are very attainable. They're very attainable. For sure, for sure. I, at the end, I, you didn't need a, you didn't need to save your Macho Man, at least. We, we, it doesn't look like so. I don't what, think. big Papa Pump? Huh? Adding him? I probably, it definitely helped. Papa I think, Pump I is our savior. Are we going to, I guess <laughs> it'll be up to me whether we deem him, because I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody else deemed him that. That's that's kind of what I deem that Macho Man as to this day. It's always, it's not crowdfund Macho Man, it's savior Macho Man. <laughs> I always I always give him his his roses and his flowers for quote unquote saving the the crowdfunder. So that was awesome. But I've, I've talked to you about it. I thought that this crowdfunder personally for me was much better in terms of, you know, hitting me in my in in my zone of collecting, in my zone of like things that I enjoy the most out of wrestling. The new gen arena I pretty much back um for support of the project, first of all. And then secondly, I wanted I wanted the entrance way. Like I thought that was the coolest part of it. And so that was the thing for me. And then for this one, it's it's the stage. So even if even if no figures were included, I don't know a lot of people weren't like this, but even if no figures were included, I would back it just for the stage itself. I think it's too uh especially when you see it in person. Anybody that's not seen it in person, when they unbox this thing, God willing, it comes to fruition. When they see this thing in person, it's ginormous. It's actually bigger than my coffee table, as I've explained. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great multi-purpose stage. Obviously, it's a nitro stage. It's the nitro stage. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm I'm foreseeing everybody getting this thing and doing whatever they want with it and letting their imaginations go wild. Um, and I'm going to certainly do it as well. Uh but it, it's it's just awesome. You know, I've been doing a lot of these interviews and sitting next to it and, and doing, you know, little photo shoots uh, in whatever free time I have uh, to just try to show like the possibilities of, of what you could do uh, if you have this thing. I don't know, something weird going on with my lighting here. Like, um, yeah, the, let's go yeah, over this way a little bit. How about that? Yeah, but I mean, it, it's incredible. Like I would have just backed this stage by itself as well, right? But I know that you know, um, they're not, not everyone's that type of collector, right? A lot of our WWE collectors are, are in it for the figures period and stuff like this is, is a bonus or icing on the cake. So I, I get it. Right. But I mean, you know, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed and that we, we unlock as many figures as possible. For sure. For sure. I'm right there with you. I think I, that's, that's one of the things that's bonus is even if you, you pack up the stage, you don't have room for the stage, just take the WCW blocks out set them on your shelf they're i mean they're big too don't get me wrong they may need their own 
they take up a ton of shelf space. They're like, look at they're, this thing. They're, they're really big. Yeah. They're legitimately <laughs> like a, a wreck and slam vehicle size. Like, yeah, they're huge. They're big. They are big. So that, that right there, like when I saw that, that was one of the biggest things at the superstore out in LA. When I saw those, I was like, dude, they are absolutely massive. I had to take like 10 minutes to collect myself. It may have even been longer. I don't know, but the, the WCW letters themselves. And then you, you shared an image also, I think of the uh, the Hall of Fame four pack Eddie Guerrero, yeah. I mean, good. like look look at this. I mean, this is the entrance stage, the neon entrance stage size. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a little yeah. bit smaller, but I mean, sure. holy smokes! And you get two of these plus the stage. It's look. I get money uh, and economics are difficult now, absolutely. But this thing is just a beast of a set, and it, it really can't be compared apples to apples price wise to the new gen arena. There's just no way, and that thing's heavy too. Those WCW letters. That's like the biggest point of emphasis, probably for me, and like to my viewers or the people that watch my channel at all or the people that watch anything I've backed or talked about the crowdfunder is that the thing as soon as I saw it in person I was like okay this is absolutely worth the money and then you shared the you shared the photo of the Hall of Fame four-pack Eddie Guerrero where it was like I think you did like a certain angle of him in the middle of the stage and just the the gap between like his head and the top of like the WCW Nitro sign on the top of the entranceway. I was like, this thing is even bigger. Like, obviously, even if you see it in person, you can still, even if I get closer to it, the bigger it's going to feel. You know what I mean? So I can just see people are going to have so much fun, like posing this thing around, loading up their stage with characters, whether they just, you know, I have my arena back here, whether you want to do an arena shoot or you want to do pick fetting as it is or stop motion or just putting it on a shelf you're gonna have a ton of fun with that i can't i can't even like let I, I even took to twitter yesterday i was retrospectively looking out and i said if this thing does not get back i'm gonna be so bummed out i'm gonna be very disappointed if it doesn't get back but i truly believe i, I believe now that it will get back but I, I would be very bummed out if it didn't come to fruition yeah i don't know if my photo shoot that i did uh, last weekend made me happy or sad it was fun to pose figures on it and 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 play with the set uh but then i was like man like if this doesn't happen i'll be so disappointed that everyone can't experience this when i'm doing you know you know that day or the, those days yeah it's it's just really fun and you know don't make me be the only one who's able to do this so that's another question is if it doesn't get funded is this will this set that you guys i'm sure you've made probably what i mean you've had to have made a couple prototypes there's not just one prototype out there there's two there's two um there was one that was here at the office when you guys visited and the one that was at the superstore i'm assuming one would immediately get packed up and put into the archives if this thing didn't move forward and then maybe this this one uh is decoration in my cube here at the office I was, um i was gonna say that it would become the in the board conference room it would just be that piece <laughs> that never was in a glass case yeah, yeah. Um, let's not make that happen. Let's not make that happen. Um, I'm not. I'm not one. Um, a, a toy person who doesn't want people to to have things. Like my team works so hard to bring these things to life, action figures and play sets and everything else. And that's why we are pretty good about rescuing figures. Um, if they're you know canceled or have low production runs, like you know Harley Race as an example, um, super low run, and, and we were able to bring it back. Um, we, we want everyone who wants these things to have a chance to get them. For sure. Absolutely. And I think that it's a bonus for us because I can tell hanging out with you guys and being in person with you guys, I can tell by the way you talk about the figures, by the way you interact, that you are collectors yourselves and you are putting like collectors in the grand scheme of things. You're putting like things at the forefront. And it was even proven in the crowdfunder when you put the when you move the Scott Steiner back to 5K. Those are things that I think is truly important, especially like, you know, having your finger on the pulse of the community, things like that. So I can tell that you guys are wanting this thing to come to fruition, you know, that you put everything and you go all in. So we appreciate that. But um, right here, I have a list of questions. Not only I, I put a couple of mine on here, uh, I may have left a couple of mine off here, but I also wrote down some questions from people from my Instagram. And so I guess I can rattle them off if you're down and we can discuss. Let's, let's do it. All righty. So the first question that I have here, I, I really didn't do them in rank of importance. I just kind of wrote them down as I saw them. But one thing that I wanted to ask, and this is something that I noticed with the Shawn Michaels Survivor Series Elite. So it is from when he won the world title in the unfinished brown gear, the iconic moment. And so the question that I had was, um, we saw the prototype at the at the Mattel Design Center, 
and he had the long kick pad mold. And so I was wondering, is that going to be a situation where are you guys going to actually like, will he have a different lower leg or will he have like the kick pad lower legs and y'all are just going to sculpt a longer cowboy boot? Or is it going to be the parts would be like a Christian lower leg with cactus jack boots or something like that? Or will it be kick pads or what's the what, what's like, is that what it's going to look like? Is the prototype what it's going to be finalized or is it going to be adjusted in some way? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would have to dig through, you know, what design has submitted for part choices and then also what, you know, uh, our ca- counterparts in Asia have come back to us with their recommendations. That's another thing to, to keep in mind. You know, uh, designers may say, hey, use X, Y, and Z parts for this figure. And then Asia could come back and say, hey, these parts are incompatible because it'll leave a gap between the waist and the pelvis or, you know, whatever the case may be. So uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I do know and and we do know he's supposed to have those boots, those cowboy boots. Um, so we'll 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 see. Uh, maybe I can follow up, you know, after the fact and and on the forums or something or, or with you and, and figure that out. But yes, where they're supposed to be boots. I just don't remember from feedback from asia um what that is right okay sorry no you're good you're good i just I gotta gotta ask the questions if he if, you don't that's, ever know if you never asked so that's why the, the q a on the forums is is it's a little easier because it's like i could just look stuff up right and mm-hmm. refresh my memory uh but but know that we want it to be accurate and if it can be we'll make it happen and i mean that's hey that's where action figure surgery comes in i hate that obviously you don't want to do that you don't want to release a figure that oh we got to change this part and change this part to make it look as accurate as possible sometimes that does happen and then sometimes you know it's perfect you know sometimes i guess that's just the way of the business but the next question we have here is people a lot of people wanted me to ask about a real scale hell in a cell or elimination chamber like is is that something i mean i'm sure if you have discussed it maybe you can't tell us all everything that's went into that but i guess you couldn't tell me if it's on the table but maybe it's been discussed or maybe you've you guys have worked around that maybe you've considered it things of that nature we don't know what those two things are a real scale. no kidding kidding <laughs> um of course of course yeah we discussed those um at, I, I I can't stress this, this enough. All these ideas that you guys throw at us, we absolutely have discussed them all because we want that stuff too. Um, and we've done exploration of of things like that. I won't get into specifics, but yes, we've explored them. Uh, but you can only typically do one of those a year or every other year. Maybe something like that has to be crowdfunded. But yeah, absolutely on the table for serious consideration, maybe some exploration already done for something you mentioned, maybe not, but it makes sense to do it. It's a high price point item. The consumer literally like we're, <laughs> we're drowning in new releases all the time. I collect, you know, WWE and beyond. So do you obviously, you know, looking at your setup, uh, there's a lot coming out. So you can't, you can't drop like, you know, 10, $200 items a year or even two. You got to be careful with that stuff. Uh, and we, the feedback, even for something like this, you know, Know, timing money like everything it's like you have to be careful so it's like one year you get this and maybe another year you get you know a hell in the cell or elimination chamber or classic you know blue cage or the modern cage or whatever it may be um so we 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 do want to do them it does take time unfortunately uh but i'm sure we'll we'll keep checking off the boxes and eliminating all those items off of everyone's wish lists one at a time. That goes into my next question, actually, because obviously we know that the WCW stage is the current crowdfunder, and it's been heavily implied that the next crowdfunder will probably be the Raw's War stage if this one backs and, you know, everything goes smooth sailing. And I guess my next question would be if if this one backs completely, let's just say, let's say it gets 6,500 backers or whatever, when this one comes to fruition, Raw's War comes out and it's, you know, it backs to fruition. I'm guessing you probably, you guys probably already know the one that's on deck behind Raw's War if those two are successful. Is that? We have ideas uh, until you get into the weeds of exploring costs and tooling and i mean all the factors because because rates change every year as well right so it's like just because you have this rate to get this item at at four hundred dollars this year doesn't mean it's going to stay the same for next year in fact it's not it's going to probably go up so you know when we follow up with the next item and items we we have to take a look at that 
And, you know, maybe what we have in mind wouldn't be feasible. And maybe we have to go back to the drawing board or go to a backup idea and, and build towards it again and maybe start tooling up parts elsewhere or with a, a smaller crowdfund first, which, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here. We're, we're getting some of the parts out of the way so that the raw stage doesn't have like the insane sticker shock that it would absolutely have. Like it wouldn't get funded. <laughs> it wouldn't get funded if we would have done that raw stage first. There's no way. But maybe getting this out of the way makes that accomplishable and, and more comfortable for people's wallets. So we, we have tons of, of crowdfund ideas. We have tons of higher price point item ideas that maybe don't have to be crowdfunded. So, you know, once or twice a year, they'll, they'll come your way. And if you keep buying them, we'll keep making them. There you go. Hey, you, as Kyle Peterson says, you vote with your wallet. So we will have to, uh, I guess that remains to be seen, but this one, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll just ask it. It's not like anything crazy or anything like that, but being with Mattel and WWE, maybe you can't, I'm sure you, you've worked with these people before, but, this question is three AEW talents you'd like to make in Mattel figure form, whether elite ultimate, is there any talents that you would be like, man, I would love to design an elite of that guy or an ultimate of that guy. Is there anybody that stands out over there? Or you'd like to touch on that. Hmm. I mean, you know, my boy magic does such a good job, right? I like Sammy Guevara a lot. I think him as an ultimate would be pretty amazing because of, you know, his facial facial expressions and whatnot. Lots of uh, so that'd be great. Um, this is a low hanging fruit answer, but sting, of course, um, getting that lost legends figure out to you guys, um, getting ultimates out of him. He was in the original pitch for ultimate edition, so he would have come. Um, uh, so that's a bummer that, 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 that didn't work out. Um, man, who else? That, that makes me cry because <laughs> you know, on this channel, as soon as you guys revealed the crowdfunder, I said, guys, I love this, but this, it breaks my heart. Just a little bit, because there will not be a cross thing with this. And that would have, I think that would have gotten a lot of people immediately hooked. If that was like the, you know, the early bird or something like that, that would have, that would have hooked people immediately. I think, you know, with, yeah with a different facial. Oh man, I can, I think I'm going to go ahead and speak it into, into existence that he will eventually come back and we will get at him in an ultimate. Yes. Let's, let's uh, use the secret and will it into existence. Um, you know, every things come back around, right? They, they tend to do that. The Hardy boys came back to WWE and then the floodgates open for figures for them. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one day the stars will align again and we'll, we'll get that sting out and, and many others. Um, and I want a uh, surfer sting ultimate as well. That would be unbelievable. And maybe like just speaking about ultimate editions and ultimate CM Punk, just because like yeah. it feels like that should exist, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe uh, Magic will, will do a Supreme. Uh, but yeah, I would I would love an ultimate edition just because it's it's, you know, under my uh, my purview. Yeah, I, I mean, I can imagine people people would lose their mind for an Elite 16 upgrade to an ultimate, you know, with the shirt and the spinner title and blowing the kiss face. Maybe I know and that, now I'm getting everybody. Now everybody's mad at me for even making that up or kind of trying to create my own fantasy book in there. But yeah, that was I like those answers. I like those answers. I think I'd sneak, I'd sneak a Kenny Omega in there. Gotta have, gotta have a Kenny Omega. Yeah, yeah, of course. There you go. So this one is about the upcoming Elite Solo Sokoa. I know you 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 did talk about it on the forums. I uh, saw where you said that it would be tweaked or anything like that. Can you give us any insight onto maybe what it would change to, or have you guys worked on that? Or I know that uh, design was exploring updating it, uh, even when we revealed it they were already exploring to see if they could update it i don't once again i don't know where they are in the process with that what came back from asia based on designs feedback so all i can say at this point is is they were attempting to to tweak it and make it a, look a little bit more realistic to his his real life proportions but if for whatever reason we can't make that happen we'll absolutely tweak things for the next solo figure which I'm, of course there's going to be more right so we're, we're we're trying you know but like i said i don't i don't get to see every step of the way as marketing design does their thing and i do mine and we get together and, and collab quite a bit but yeah some of those emails uh are, i guess i should be thankful for it because i'd never get any rest if i was looking at all that stuff all righty well let's let's pray to god that something something gets fixed on there if worst comes to worst worst case scenario i guess i can i'll have to action figure surgery that one again so hopefully not hopefully not we're gonna we're gonna put our we're gonna speak that one into existence too we're gonna put that one next to 
the sting coming back right that to get fixed this one's pretty cool this is one that i would personally like to see i even tagged you i think on my story the other day interchangeable torsos for elites and ultimates obviously we've seen this in the supreme line with AEW and jazz wares we've seen you know the torso so they've kind of done that since the beginning right they have where you can interchange gear and things of that nature and customizers i guess have found a way to make those things interchangeable and i know they, they were working with ball joint jazz wares crotches and legs it wasn't mattel that they were using, but they were using Ultimate Edition torsos to make those things happen. Is that something you guys have explored? Have you have you talked about it? Has it been mentioned? And um, I guess that would probably, I guess, seemingly be the next upgrade if you were to try and make Ultimates upgraded. That would probably be like the next probable step or the most likely or something like that. But you you can take it away. Yeah, I would love it personally. Uh, I like you know swapping parts around when possible. Um, but I think. At the end of the day, you need to make choices with your tooling budget on what gives the consumer the most uh, and gives the the largest group of consumers the most. So if we have X amount of money to spend in a year, do we use that money to do potentially both new torso and pelvis to accommodate this this swappability? A better case scenario, you just have to tool up you know, one torso or pelvis. Or do you use that money for you know, brand new sculpted parts, like a new torso that's unique to Roman Reigns or additional heads or new championship titles or pinless legs or something that just gives a more broader value to to a larger amount of consumers, right? Because I mean, you know, at the end of the day, people who customize, you know, it's a niche of a niche, right? And that's no disrespect. I do it, right? Uh, but, you know, how many people really do do that? It, it's probably not a lot at the end of the day. So um, it's it's hard. It's hard because you want to do all these things, but you have to make tough choices sometimes and you just have to pick, you know, one thing and move forward with it, right? So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry, that's not like as an exciting answer, but it's like a peek behind the curtain. We think about all this stuff. We hear the requests for it and you just have to make a call at the end of the day. This year, 2024, we're doing blah, whatever it is. And that's, you know, what we align on as a team. So obviously it comes down to priority pretty much is you, you have to decide as a team, what the be the biggest priority is. And some things obviously are going to tr trump others when it comes to, you know, creating what, what's more important for the, the longevity of the brand and et cetera. So yeah, I get that. And that would obviously if you were to do interchangeable torsos on ultimates and include, you know, I don't know, like a Supreme, you have an entire different gear in there. It'd basically be like you're getting a regular Anna Chase version. You'd obviously have to see an increase in price, right? I mean, the price would have to go up a pretty decent amount. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we did do something like that, um, it, I, I, it would just be like uh, Master's Origins where the parts are swappable, but you don't get like extra torsos or arms with those. It's already just, it's just an option for you, an option for customize, customizers. If we wanted to include, you know, uh, extra legs or an extra torso uh, and more parts than what you currently see in Ultimates, we definitely would have to charge uh, a little bit more. I don't know how much more, but it definitely would, would cause a price hike. Yeah, for sure. And I guess that would actually make more sense. If you made every single elite, you know, interchangeable, that would make it incredible because, you know, you, you're putting out three Roman Reigns, four Seth Rollins a year. You buy, you know, all four of them and you can, or you get the ultimate and then you can literally just pop, you know, swap and pop them. So that would be incredible. I actually have it here. You mentioned Roman Reigns getting an updated formula. I actually put here, I said uh, something about, where was it? Something about, put it. have you guys thought about putting the Hogan Ultimate Torso on Roman Reigns? Because in the render image, it looks like he's got like a similar, like the Zeus or the Hulk Hogan style torso. And then, you know, he's obviously got the rock or the, you know, the everybody call it like the overly jacked style torso. So that's that's a case of, of you know, Bill's uh, heart being in the right place and parts not being compatible. So that one for sure, we got word back and they said, hey, these don't work with the hips. I don't remember if it was a gap or it just, you know, just didn't fit whatsoever. But unfortunately, sometimes because, you know, people, you know, change positions and maybe there's a new engineer who engineered it. And we don't always see the insides of these figures, right? It's like you just get the figure in hand and it's a test shot in, in all pink and yellow. And you don't know that they changed, uh, you know, the, 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 attachment inside that attaches like the torso to the hips or, or whatever it may be. Um, so that's unfortunate sometimes. And those 
parts weren't compatible. So Bill had to pivot and, and move away from what we saw in the render. But I, to me, I feel like Roman is worth investing in, you know, something a little more appropriate for him for, for something like Ultimates going forward. But you know, the ship had sailed at that point, right? We were into development, uh, budgets were already allocated, and, and we just decided like, hey, maybe next time we can make it happen. Got you. I got you. That one was one that I, I thought looked fantastic. Like, I still like the Roman Ultimate, obviously, but it did get docked a few points because of the, the overly jacked torso there. But I'm sure um, he doesn't mind having like super yeah, ripped abs and, yeah, and it's big like, pecs, it's like, right? Tri- it's like Triple H, right? He like has it where it's like, I can, I have to look this good in my video <laughs> games. I got to look that good in my figures. I got to, you know, he's got the overly thing. And actually, Roman Reigns is one of those guys that's kind of had like the same, a lot of his parts have been reused for, years at this point i mean it's it's i'm want to i don't want to get crazy but it's almost a decade almost that we've seen those shield legs i think so he's been kept the same pants the entire time so that's it's kind of wild but it, it helped bill oh yeah the same pants for for 10 years hey that's i mean randy orton virtually yeah. has had the same exact mold guys like that I mean, we've seen it. Some, I think some things definitely do need to be updated. Some things I think work have worked really well. Like Randy Orton, I, what would you change? You know what I mean? I think they've they've given him bigger arms before that have looked better than the skinnier arm mold that maybe fit him at that time. Maybe, you know, he got a little bit more jacked. They upgraded the arms. His legs, I mean, versus, I, th- I think Randy Orton's one of those guys that pretty much has a damn near perfect formula. So that's, that's all good and well. So certain guys, like for me personally, John Cena's, I would love to have a new – shoe mold like the same like the montez ford shoe mold the that elite three or elite seven cena shoe mold that is one that drives me crazy i think that the cena shoe mold is outdated i said it i want to i can't remember what it's either in my elite ranking one through 100 video that i'm still editing that that video is such project i i think i bit off more than i could chew to be honest with you with how many like all the different editing i'm doing in that video and like it's legitimately every single it's like 100 rankings so it's it's a very long project but it's either in that video or something I reviewed here recently in Elite 102 or something like that where I talk about the shoe mold and it's just it uh, it gets loose, it falls forward. I have a Cena shelf over here, and all the ones that have the shorter shorts with the nice shoe mold that stands completely flat, none of them ever fall over. But that top shelf with the longer jorts and you know the throwback Cenas with the shoes, they always over time doesn't matter if they're tied out of the box or whatever. Over time, it's like they just start tipping and then they all plummet and then. As you guys, you I mean, you can see they're like lined up in a row, so they domino effect and they all fall over. So that's something I'd like to right. see. I'll tell Bill. Thank, thank you. <laughs> well, also, it's I mean, we've seen that shoe mold for I mean, 12, 13 years. So that that shoe mold stuff or that mold specifically has been around the block a time or two. So that's kind of wild to even think about, but. That's one that I would advocate for. Retired the shoes. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so right here I have written out, people were wondering what the attire is for the Triple H in the new Legends wave, the Legend Series 20. Mm, it is Black is it Trunk. Like, does it say like the game? Uh, I don't remember what the back says, but it definitely has HHH on the front. It has the uh, kind of wax seal shirt i believe right the red wax seal shirt mm-hmm. um he does come with new decoed version of the the mesh shirt that came with the ultimate as well and it definitely looks different and, and and nice and and extra shiny yeah but i don't remember what the back of the trunks have on them unfortunately okay no you're good i know i want to say i can envision what it looks like it's hard to explain but it's like the i want to say it's like it has the H on top, and then it has the H's like this, and they're kind of like a triangle, and in the middle it says the game. I could be wrong about that. That's just – when I think of that era and I think of that specific T-shirt in that time frame, I think, but I could be wrong, obviously, but that's just – Let's keep our fingers crossed it's that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I if my memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not always right as much as I my pride think, likes to think I am. So that was one that people were wondering about, so – Hopefully we can uh, get some uh, clarity on that. It, it should. I, I think they're shooting that now, so we might have photos of that in the next month or two months. Okay, perfect. And that's the that's the next set, right? Holly so Hayes. we've got who do we have on shelf right now? We have Hogan and the Head Shrinkers and and um, Paul Lee. Then uh, we have the Brother Paul Love that's and it, Undertaker yeah. and the Nation. And then the last set of the year will be Legends Twenty with uh, R and B, Greg, uh, Triple H, DiBiase, and Perfect. That is correct. Yeah, that that Undertaker wave skipped my brain somehow. I don't know how, but it did. The Seth Rollins 
Ultimate Edition. I actually have it right here. Just reviewed that this week. Fantastic piece. Definitely going to be a top figure ultimate of the year. It's probably going to be in my top five ultimates of the year. I think that fur coat, probably probably a top five garment of clothing that Mattel's done in WWE action figure form. It's definitely up there, at least in recent memory. I think the quality is fantastic. I even mentioned in my review, if you were to go to one of the many talented cloth customizers in the community and you were to contact, I no doubt that somebody out there can make it. I, I know of people that could make it. And I think... If you were to go to them and commission that jacket, that jacket would cost you more than probably two ultimates or possibly the price of an ultimate alone for the jacket. So to get that jacket with that great ultimate edition with the interchangeable head sculpts and all that for $32.99 that it'll retail for or $35 bucks or whatever you want to say, that is, I don't think you, you can't really beat that. So I, I, about that figure, I say all that to say, sorry about that. I say all that to say, somebody asked if going forward, if Seth Rollins elites are going to have that uh, molded crotch piece, is that something that we could see where you have, you know, that belt mold sculpted on there? Is that mm. something that'll continue forward or is it only going to be on ultimates? Is there potential reuse there? No, because he's got the drop down hips, but it doesn't mean uh, we may not tool it up for elites without the drop down hips, but that particular mold won't be used on elites right now. So um, another thing, you know, uh, when Seth comes up again and we have tooling dollars, maybe I I pitched that to to design and see if we can update them that way. But yeah, unfortunately, this this will have to be relegated to ultimates only for now. Got you. All righty. That's uh that's actually something that I wanted to know as well. So I'm glad somebody asked that. Also, but I'm glad. But I'm glad you like the figure because uh, we had wanted to do Seth for a really long time, and you know it was just like, what do you, what look do you do? And then you know he was going through a lot of changes in his character. We do a lot of Seths on top of it, so you know whatever we wanted to choose for Ultimate Edition needed to be amazing. So I, I'm really happy we landed on that particular look because as a figure, it just like looks look off, off, off the charts cool. Yeah, for sure, and it it stood out to me because we didn't know anything about the jacket until the superstore. So like, you know, we just seen the render, we saw it at the beach shop, we saw the prototype and all this different stuff. And we got to see the head sculpts and the torso choice and the crotch piece, like we mentioned. And then you get to the superstore and you're like, didn't see that coming. So that was a really cool surprise to see that on display. And so that was a really cool, uh, nice, close to the best secret that you guys hid from us. But I think, I, I don't think I've seen anybody really complain at all about that figure i don't really you, you have zero room to so i think it's it's definitely it's going to be in everybody's top 10 it has to be i don't see how you could leave it out yeah i mean i guess someone could complain about anything but like that's a tough <laughs> that's a tough one to yeah, complain yeah. about um and it's it's just one of those figures where uh you want a seth ultimate you don't know what to do. Finally do it and nail it. It's just like now this is suddenly one of your favorite ultimates, my favorite ultimates. You know, I mention all the time, like the Brock ultimates, like maybe we, we done, we've we done a couple now, right? And we have a Ruthless Aggression one coming out next and you put it on paper and you're like, okay, another Brock, maybe that's not that exciting. But then you get them in hand and you're like, holy smokes, this is one of the best figures in the line and and, and they're so fun. So I think Seth definitely falls into that category. You mentioned the Brock Lesnar. I even asked you previously about the Brock Lesnar Ultimate. The Ultimate 15 Brock Lesnar is probably one of my top 10, maybe even top five, if I spend enough time on it, maybe. It's so good. Just it, I said it in my review of the figure. It just feels it feels like he's just better than the rest. It's almost it's so weird. So like when you feel it in your hand, I guess it's because of the girth of the figure and the size and whatnot. He just he, he's a legitimate beast. He's a legit beast. So I love that figure. So I'm glad you mentioned that there. It's one of my personal favorites. So that is good. Right here, we have uh, somebody wanted to know what your fa your personal favorite WWE event or pay per view is of all time, or one that you enjoy or like to go back and watch. Or hmm. it's tough because I like you know matches, you know, or a specific match or half shows. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it does make it tough. I love to watch old Royal Rumbles. Um, sometimes some years I don't have a lot of time leading into the new Royal Rumble, but my old tradition was to watch as many old Rumbles as possible leading into, you know, that year's Rumble. I also love WrestleMania 18, 18 Rock and Hogan, um, because I mean, it was just like an insanity. I was there at the Sky Dome and I, I've, I've been to a, tons of WrestleManias, um since wrestlemania 15 that was my first one and nothing ever replicated that 
feeling again and nothing had before so that that's a that's a pretty badass mania some of the older summer slams some of the, the original summer slams i really like survivor series elimination chamber that sean that was a fun one were you there and for that, that was, one yeah yeah i went to that one too that was that was really awesome uh pretty cool really like during that time um around that pay-per-view that summer slam when sean came back that was a great summer slam but that time I was I was doing the travel packages for with WWE. So, you know, all those those big pay-per-views, um, I would just buy the travel package and get great seats. And it was it was a pretty awesome time. And they were traveling around the the East Coast quite a bit. And I think there was one year where I only missed maybe one pay-per-view because it was in, in Canada or something. And I was like, ah, maybe that's a bit too far. But I got lucky with most of them. And, and it was like just tons of them took took place on the East Coast within driving distance for the most part. Wow. So you, I'm sure, okay, so if you, if you were, you obviously were a collector back then. So you collected Jacks and all the different figures then. So now it's almost like, I mean, that's kind of wild that you were to there to witness all these things in person, and now you can turn around and design and create action figures of those events that you attended and things of like you know that nature. It's it's pretty awesome, and sometimes I don't even realize it, right? Because I, I went to tons of I don't know, it could it be thousands, maybe thousands of wrestling shows if that's possible. If not, definitely hundreds. And it's like just checking the box and growing up in the Northeast, right? I grew up in Philly and that area, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, uh, it's just like a hotbed for for pro wrestling and just like checking off the box, like realized like, oh okay, this this Jeff Hardy Triple H uh, elite two pack like i was at that smackdown right i was front row at that smackdown like holy smokes uh, we're making this and you know hogan and Shawn michaels from SummerSlam, and so so many others right and then also like sharing those those cool moments with with talent like adam cole was like i was at that summer <laughs> um so that that's that's pretty rad too and you know hopefully a lot of people get that same experience when they see these figures announced of, of knowing they were at these shows and now they get to have action figures of, of the gear and and the you know to to extend those memories into physical form absolutely that that i feel like that right there that takes it to a whole different you know level obviously i i think i guess one step above that would be it being you and it you know it, it being an action figure of you i feel like that would be pretty close to that maybe not that would be the ultimate goal or the ultimate like holy crap this is amazing but that would probably be the next step to maybe yeah, yeah. To keep uh, twisting Bill's arm to figure out a way to get us into the line somehow. Uh, he's Please. he's a little resistant because he is he's a very humble guy and um, he he wants the spotlight to be on the talent and he he doesn't think he's important enough to um, to have a figure. But I mean, he's he's the longest tenured wrestling figure personality employee designer anything having to do with wrestling figures ever in history wow like period like that dude is h historic at this point um nobody's done it longer i know you know jeremy of course an icon like the godfather uh, of uh, of what, what what we do and you know so many others involved throughout the years uh, but the the time bill spent doing this and the the body of work at the quality level that he's done are there some misses of course right you crank out hundreds of figures a year like i mean come on but the the, the level of quality to to be able to accomplish that for you know going on you know 13 i mean he's already working on 2024 stuff 14 years it's insane yeah he's he definitely deserves a figure uh and then when that happens i can weasel my way in and, and figure out how to get my own figure he's your elite two pack give you an elite. right Ringside exclusive Elite Two Pack or Mattel Creations exclusive. There you go. You yeah, if I can get our MOQs down to like five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think for sure. Actually, when I met him for the first time, or when I saw him at the the studio or the design center, when I walked by, I said, "Bill, the legend," and I shook his hand. So he's definitely he's definitely a legend in his own right. Like, I mean, besides you two. There's not really, I mean, obviously you have Rob, you have other people that are in the picture, but outside of y'all, there's not really anyone to put like a face to the name, especially in this space. So you guys are representatives of the brand and the creators of the figures. So, you know, you have a, you have a title there that you have to defend on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of collectors who work on our brand too, but I think 
I think Bill and I and Rob are just like so in the weeds. It's very specific with wrestling and, and WWE, you know, and sometimes that affinity for those like, yes, it helps you in toys, work in toys, uh, no collector consumers, uh, but it d- doesn't always 100% translate well to getting in the weeds and talking about wrestling figures with with, you know, hardcore fans, for sure. if that makes sense, right? Like not not downing anybody like everybody's a collector and everybody loves stuff and love loves what we do. But there's just like next level insanity that like, I think we, the two of us at least have, right? I mean, you could look around, the, have a look, <laughs> have a look. Uh, I tell people, I tell, I joke on the channel all the time. Like I'm mentally ill. Like I, like it's obviously a joke, but I like, yeah, like I'm crazy about this stuff. Like I'm not like, a, I'm not the average consumer. So that's, and like, I get that. I understand that. I can take that step back and say, yeah, I'm insanity. Like, yeah, I would back it no matter what, but there's this, 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 and this, and this that has to appeal and things of that nature. But yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate the, the words there. I, I take it as a compliment because, you know, I want like being in this space, whatever I do, I want to be, you know, you want to be like obsessed with it. You want to, and we we touched on this in person at the superstore. You want to, you don't want to just, you guys are not just collecting a paycheck. You're, you're passionate about what you do and you're passionate about the job that you have. So we get the best of the best because you guys do that. If you were working on something that wasn't WWE, maybe you were making, I'm just going to make something up. Maybe you were making Gumby toys or something. You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't really, you would, you wouldn't probably like, yeah, you have your personal work ethic, but you probably wouldn't dive into it as deep as you do because you have a personal interest. Like you said, you toured around the country, going to all these shows. You're passionate about wrestling in WWE. So therefore, you're going to want the figures to represent that and you're a collector yourself. So all that kind of ties in. So I think that's what makes the difference is you're actually passionate about the job you have. You're not just collecting a paycheck. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate in my fandom that I do like everything. I never dropped off as a fan of, of pro wrestling. So I literally love every uh, every single era and enjoyed every every moment of, of living that life. And and it's really fulfilling for me to do this on WWE. I, I really am, you know, it's, um, I guess, a service oriented approach to things, right? Consumers first, doing things with the consumer in mind as the first approach to things. And, you know, then, then bringing in the strategy strategy and the slots, slots and rationale, it's called, and and working on what people are asking for and inserting them into the opportunities, right? So, you know, lots of fulfillment there. And you're right, if I was doing, you know, something else like Polly Pocket, uh, could I do it? Well, sure, sure. Uh, but would I get that complete fulfillment out of it that I do doing this? No, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. It's like, so like the little, it's missing that you're going to get the detail in the shirt or you're going to get the, you're going to do your best to get the little, the button on Doink's jacket. You know what I mean? Things that you could easily just skip over and add that in. And of course, yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you may miss stuff like nobody's dumb. Like there's missing stuff. <laughs> I would, I would like to think that you guys look at figures and try to get the most out of them that you know the collectors are going to want yeah and you know sometimes it's reference photos of course you know you have to use reference photos for deco creation and and part choices and stuff and somebody didn't wear their their tape on their fingers in that photo shoot right um because they shot it you know the next day at the smackdown taping and they wore it on raw and things like that happen right oversights happen you're going to do your best to, to fix it the next go around uh, but for me like i have to look at bigger picture stuff at this point just for my own sanity right um like i can't redesign everything that that bill does we catch as much as possible we, we re- review the stuff together pull up images reference images to double check um but you have to at a point when you you have um, specific duties, you have to draw a line in the sand or else you're just going to die and overwork, right? Uh, because the work that I have to do as a marketer for, for the line, um, like I manage the line, the business of the line. I have goals that have to be met for the line to be successful all while doing it for for the community and for you guys, right? Like making that work together. Um, and that is way more than a full-time job and my hands are full there. So unfortunately, you know, would I love 
love my job to just be comparing every, you know, spot of deco to the reference photos every single time, 100% accurately. Absolutely. I would love it. That'd be a dream. Um, but, you know, I, I do have to think a little bit bigger picture sometimes. Um, and I have to rely on other team members um, who are also experts to to look at that stuff. And there's a lot, you know, like I said, Bill works on hundreds of figures a year. Um, and unfortunately, if, if something for one reason or another, whether it's it's something that's missed uh, or something that happens lost in translation with with Asia, right, because we're working with with counterparts, um, you know, overseas to make these things happen or it's a, a license issue or somebody else's IP, you know, all these things come into play and can affect what you ultimately see as your your action figure or a budget or whatever it may be. For sure. And I, I, I touch on stuff like that in the reviews, like, right, like we just got done with Elite 102. I mentioned, you know, like I was reviewing Elite 102 Mick Foley and I said, you know, I don't really care for the painted on torso. I think it would have been much better had they just done skin tone torso and shoulders and then had a, a cloth commissioner shirt and a cloth flannel to throw over the top. And I said, and of course, like that's in a perfect world, a perfect world that that's how it would be. But I do understand there's there's logistics. There's things that you have to you have to get in a certain budget. You have to have a certain profit line. There's got to be things that are approved. So it's like it's not just it's not a perfect world. I mean, that's pretty much all you can say is it's yeah. not, not everything can be perfect as much as we want to but that's why you can do it yourself if you really you know if you, you want to do this I, I i customize stuff right like you know lex uh i shot i shot the figures for the nitro stage and and i had legends lex there and someone was like hey did you do a boot swap on him i'm like yes i had my heart set on lex with white boots that's what i wanted mm -hmm. and it didn't work out that way and i was like Damn it. Like I wanted Lex in white boots and, you know, I just did it myself. It, it happens, right? There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen sometimes to make these things happen and, and other decisions were made or some, sometimes I have my heart set on a particular shirt or, or an execution of the shirt, you know, soft goods versus plastic. And then, you know, we have to pivot and do something else. And, and you, you know, you try to make it happen the way that you want it to happen, but more importantly, the way that you want the consumers to have it happen. Uh, but, you know, you, you get at a cut bait and keep moving forward um, because you got hundreds of other things waiting in the pipeline to get done. So uh, it's 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 a wild process. You know, I, I wish sometimes we had a documentary crew following us around for a year for the complete cycle so everybody could see what's going on here. Um, it's never for lack of, of, of want uh, when something goes wrong or isn't up to expectations, that's for sure. So I'm moving on to the next question. Got a few more here. And so one thing that we saw, I want to say it was this week or maybe it was the last, some, some of the last few days, I do believe, maybe it was over this past weekend, we got to see the detail shots of the Ultimate Edition Eddie Guerrero figure. And a lot of people were talking about the Jack Torso. We saw it at the WrestleMania Superstore, and it looked a whole lot better. And I don't think it really caught people's attention because the shirt was on there. And I think the figure really does look good with the shirt on. I think if people were to just leave the shirt on there, it probably wouldn't be the biggest issue. But people were talking about changing his torso as well. People talked about, uh, I think one thing that a lot of people also wanted to talk about is the skin tone. They they feel like the skin tone is not accurate for, say, guys like Eddie Guerrero, guys like Dominic, and certainly uh, things like that. So people were asking, is there a way or have you guys thought about possibly changing the Eddie Guerrero skin tone or the dominant skin tone or what goes into that or any any you know anything you'd like to touch on with that yeah i think i think design has or is looking to to change that uh, in the near future i mean it, who knows what what gets approved at the end of the day right mm -hmm. um sometimes when you establish something like that sets the tone for approvals going forward but we're, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do and and update those skin tones and that was even before you know that eddie figure the photos came out recently because really a lot of that stuff wasn't being spoken about during WrestleMania weekend. I mean, because there were so many things to talk about. Yeah. Um, 
So anyway, the, the team is looking into it. We'll see what we can do. The torso, yeah, it's 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 a little big. So hopefully the next time we, we do Eddie, maybe we can revisit what torso he gets or or something new. I mean, I've, I've seen people uh, customizing via Photoshop already. So maybe there's something that exists if, if it works for the height um, that Eddie should be and works with the, the, the pelvis part. You know, we'll, we'll see what, what we need to do to, to improve Eddie for the next time. And I think the next one we already announced was a nitro eddie from roughly the time period of his halloween havoc feud with ray and he was much smaller than anyway so um at least that one should should maybe be a little more to people's liking but i think when you pose out this current eddie he he, i i posed him at the superstore in an iconic pose and i had you know the legs maneuvered appropriately and it looked really nice i think that's the key when he's standing static vanilla waiting for the bus he he doesn't look <laughs> as good as he possibly could look uh but i think when he's posed out in a signature pose and you see a lot of those like shots where his arms are up and you have a nice side view of him it looks much much better so it, it'll come down to that how you display him to maximize how good he looks and then we'll try to to nail it uh on the next round perfect do you have a well if I, that's what I, was, I think at the superstore he looked really really good i thought he looked really good like because the shirt hit it obviously and also black is slimming so you know you put the black shirt on there it really slims him down i thought it looked really good then and i we i, I don't know for some like you said there were so many things like happening and so many figures revealed that you really didn't think oh i wonder what he looks like under that under that shirt like what does he look like exactly so that skipped my mind because it looked really good with the shirt and the way you posed him i thought it looked pretty dang perfect but it is nice to know that you know you guys are gonna it's gonna be on the board for you know, changes and things of that nature in the future. Maybe you can, uh, people will be more satisfied with that. Do you have a, a TBA of when that, that ultimate's going to be hitting retail? I'm sure. I mean, we're looking at probably what a year from now. It'll be the latter part of 2024. Uh, Cause we'll do Brett and Roddy first. And then the next wave will be second half with, with Eddie and somebody else. Um, and I think the key to a lot of figures, because, you know, when you when you examine a lot of action figures in general, WWE or otherwise, if they're standing in an unnatural way, they, sometimes they just don't look good. What really brings them to life and accentuates the positives is, is nailing those poses, which is why I love action figure photography so much, or people who pose on their shelves or, you know, w- whatever it may be, because that's when it really like breathes life into the action figure. And, and it, it just brings it that much closer to the real human being. So, you know, that that's why I pose, you know, I, I always do these shows and I go out early and I, I pose those with Robert Rudman and and bill and we want to make sure our action figures are all alive and represent the superstar um, as much as possible that includes like signature poses when possible obviously things like basics get a little bit tough sometimes but when you're talking about elites and ultimates and we're looking up stuff on our phones moments in time trying to nail those those poses if i have like you know a a mental rolodex of old promo photos you know from back in the day and, and images from magazines and i'm always trying to replicate those because i know other people are similar and when you think of you know diamond dow's page you know what his poses are and that's what he should look like and that's what i want you to see when you see his action figure i want you to see this for the first time and not like standing at the bus diamond dow's page i agree i think i th- I, I th- i'd say for the most part i think uh, uh, one of those like at the top of the list would probably be get an official elite mdt and then number two would be posing getting to pose the figures at one of those shows one day, like before they go in the glass case, that would be up there on my, on my, uh, I guess, dream scenarios or whatever the case <laughs> you want to say. But I like that answer. I like that answer there. Another question here about some gear about an upcoming figure. Do you recall what gear the Orton ultimate edition is? Mm, it's, it's, you know, black with black logos, uh, but I don't remember the events. So is it going to be like matte black trunks with shiny black? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's, it's from 2017. RK RK Bro era, really uh, for sure. Um, so y'all just y'all threw in the 2017 18 hoodie with because I'm pretty sure that was like the 2017 18 hoodie. All right, guys. So this is actually editing tray right now, and the reason that I thought this was the 2017 hoodie, I'll pull up a side by side so you guys can exactly see what I was seeing. So I thought that the hoodie that was on display at the superstore was a prototype or like an early version, and so it just had like misprints on it. I did not realize that 
Randy Orton had a hoodie that was the 2017 hoodie just with bro spelt backwards on the hoodie. And so that is why I had the confusion. You guys can see the logos are pretty much the same, except he flipped it around. That's my honest mistake here. So that's the reasoning why I thought it was 2017 hoodie, and I didn't know that it was supposed to be an RK Bro hoodie for the figure, you know. So, yeah, that's my reasoning that he's coming. Uh, out. Without without looking at the you know at the turnover for it, I don't I don't really remember. Yeah, I think I think it's RK Bro era. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can take that. You can take that. Hoodie. It, now I know when I interview with you, I need a second laptop with my email open so I can refresh my memory and all these things. But yeah, like I said before, it's like these things like that. That's gonna hit, you know, summertime at some point. Uh, so that means we probably did sculpt and deco a year ago. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone from the memory banks until I see the photos again and it refreshes my memory um, or have the figure in hand and get to, you know, play with it a little bit or pose it. Um, so yeah, Randy, it's in that mad rush to pose everything for WrestleMania. I probably had 30 seconds with the figure to to pose it really quickly and make it look look presentable. And yeah, I just don't remember the details of of the gear, unfortunately, other than black on black. I don't even remember you're saying the soft goods hoodie. Like I have no recollection of that whatsoever, unfortunately. Well, the- um, yeah, but it'll come back again. It'll come back again once I once I have it in hand. I got you. Well, I mean, that's that's fine. That was just a personal question that I had because I'm I'm a big Randy Orton guy. And so I think we've gotten a hoodie before. If it's the the hoodie I'm thinking it is, it's from like 27, 20, 2017, 2018. And it was from the last time we got that hoodie, it was rubber and it was in the WrestleMania 34 Elite, which I didn't like. I thought that was I, I did not like that Orton. I was it was like right around the time that like True Effects was either starting or it was like right around that time. And he looked he looked like kind of old and then he had uh his trunks was missing a lot of deco but obviously i think it's this one i think it's this one Mm, i can't see the logos from there but it wasn't the logo the logo was white wasn't it unless he maybe he did he bring the hoodie back in 2021 like randomly possibly he he wore it he wore it interesting i can't see the logo right there though well, we'll see soon. Once again, I think this uh, will probably be shot in a couple weeks, it's, and it's, it's, it's we'll have for, those images. Our answers, our questions will be answered. Yeah, and it's, it's up for pre-order right now, so go order it. Code MD Toys. There you go. It might be RK Bro logos on it. Really? It might be. Actually, now that I'm you just say that, speculating. Now that you say that, you might be correct because I want to say that it had like it looked like the logo had been misprinted. Because, but it could have been maybe it said RK Bro, so it'd be extra stuff. And maybe I thought that it was the 2017 hoodie when it was actually a different hoodie. So maybe that's definitely possible. Place your bets, everyone. There you go. <laughs> what I is probably... it? Is it a Makina mashup or is it accurate? <laughs> I, I'm all for in this specific case, I would be all for a, a Makina mashup. So actually, I have the figure right here. I have a custom one of this hoodie. It's not this hoodie, is it? <sighs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, if it isn't this hoodie specifically, it's very similar to this hoodie. And so maybe he brought so, back. One of the things there with soft goods as well is uh, I see soft goods um, maybe twice before release, uh, maybe three times. Once for the turnover, when there's a visual of the talent wearing the soft goods or the soft goods, like a, a reference image of the soft goods of some sort, Um so that's the first time, and that's a year ago now, right? Then I'll see it uh, maybe if we do a sample review and I see it then, or if I'm lucky, you know, doing a show and we're posing it out. So this one, I've probably seen this this piece of soft goods only only three times <laughs> yeah. uh, so far. Uh, so that's why sometimes these these things get lost in the memory banks. No, I completely understand that. Like I'll have people, and time flies by too. So, you know, you'll have something that you looked at or reviewed and then I have to even do that and I'll do a full I'll do a I'll spend an hour reviewing a figure and then forget stuff so I I completely understand. And so we finally have reached our final question here. So long-winded, I have no idea how long this video is going to be, probably over an hour, but hopefully everybody it's a glorious 3 hour spectacular. Yeah. There you go, there you go. Hopefully I'm not up all night editing it and rendering it and whatever, but I, if I guess We were we were talking so long my light shut off behind me. My, there, my, there you go. my He-Man yeah. light. Yeah, there you go. That's actually that's a sweet. I'm not even a He-Man guy, but that's I I I'm envious of that. Like imagine that with WWE superstars with the LED light and all that. That's 
pretty beautiful. But the last question I have here is if Hogan isn't backed, if we don't reach the 11 K was, or what did I write here? I have chicken scratch sometimes. What, is the new World Heavyweight Championship already been plugged in down the line from here, or is that exclusive only to the crowdfund? It was created for the crowdfund. It's not tooled, and that tooling money was allocated to to this, right? Um, so it would have been created for this, um, and the tooling money is allocated to the, the backers, right? And when we moved him, that tooling money went with him to the back of the line at 11k unfortunately so if we don't unlock him here can we try to get it out later yes uh, do i want to get it out later yes it goes to the back of the line on what we're already working on right because we're already deep into 2024 uh thinking about 2025 even at this point um so i don't know how soon we can make that happen should hulk not get unlocked here I think that's like a little bit of a misconception with, you know, some of these crowd funds when they see the models um, on display uh, or in our videos or photos, like they think it's it's tooled and done and it's not tooling. The point is that you don't cut steel on, on your tooling uh, until it's funded. Um, so you don't, you know, have that unnecessary financial expenditure. And it's like, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to tool these large items like this. So anyway, long-winded answer. Answer, but that title moves to the back of the line of, of priorities, unfortunately, um, should he not get unlocked at this time. Okay. All righty. Well, that's uh, obviously that's, I mean, I guess it, it sucks if, it, you know, obviously if we don't get the 11K. Do I think it's going to reach 11K? Probably not. If I had to, you know, uh, if I had to bet on it, I would probably say not, but, you know, anything's possible. I bet people didn't think that it would jump 1,200 backers in the span of a day or two or 30 hours or whatever it was. So anything's possible at this juncture, as Kevin Garnett likes to say. And so, yeah, I, I think um, also with that, you said it's not tooled, right? So there's no prototype. There's no nothing of it created yet, right? I mean, it's just a 3D, a 3D model that we printed. Okay. It's like glued to a plastic thing um but yeah i mean look at you can see the discoloration on on hulk here because this isn't even a real figure it's just um a 3d printed model with with it looks like articulation but you can't move it it'll just crumble in my hands if i try to move it and even the bandana's on a little wonky um but yeah it's it's discolored it's one piece it's not flexible um so there's two there's two of these and i mean yes you can display it like this but otherwise it's useless so I would love to get to 11,000. There's some work ahead of us to make that happen by Friday. It's not out of the realm of, of being possible. Um, but, you know, let's focus on getting this thing funded and starting to unlock the tiers. And who knows what happens? We saw everyone rally behind Doink and the ring skirts with the last crowd fund. Um, and, you know, I, I think the same thing's going to happen come this Friday. Everyone's going to start unlocking things and pushing for the next tier. And we'll see how far we can move the needle. I'm down. I'm down again at the, I'm going to try and make this, get this out before the, the thing's over. This is Wednesday night that we're recording this quite late. Actually. Uh, you Again, this, this man said that the cleaning crew has showed up at Mattel. So not going to hold him any longer here, but uh, hopefully we can reach the 11 K. I hope we back it fully. And at the five K to be honest, the 5K is all I care about, but if we can get more, that's the more the merrier. I'm all for more figures, more stuff, more value added to the crowdfunder, so that's all good for me. But I think that is going to wrap up our interview here with Steve. I appreciate you for coming on and talking, answering our questions here. Hopefully, like obviously, some of the answers, we, we didn't get all, you know, we don't have all the answers here, but and some of those things can't be disclosed anyway. But I appreciate you coming on, sitting down with me for two, two and a half hours here and chatting it up and talking figs yeah my pleasure anytime uh and one last plug head to mattelcreations.com to back the wcw ultimate edition nitro stage uh let's let's surpass 5k unlock some figs uh and then a year from now we'll all have space issues and have to figure yeah. that out but it's going to be an awesome problem to have absolutely absolutely well, i appreciate it man it was uh, good having you on and uh, i'm sure this obviously will not be the last time and I look for it. Probably the next time I see you in person will probably be WrestleMania in Philly, potentially. Yeah, I'll be there for sure. That's your hometown, right? Yeah, yeah. Grew up in Philly, lived there for 18 years uh, in Philly itself. Uh, so homecoming, it'll be awesome. And it'll be home a homecoming for all of us. 
tons of tons of you know uh influencers and collectors um and i can't wait to see everybody out there in philly but yeah comic-con first you got to make it out to a comic-con as yes, well yes you are you are correct you are correct but all right man i appreciate it thank you for coming on appreciate you guys so very much huge shout out to our patrons got to make that shout out of course always appreciate their support of the mdt youtube channel but that is gonna wrap this video up guys thank you guys so very much for watching follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok at my damn toys you can follow steve osier at action figure attack over on instagram would you like to plug anything else Action Fig Attack uh, on Twitter, and I think it's also Action Figure Attack on TikTok. All right, there you go. But have a blessed day. See you guys next time. Peace out.